Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing a what's next on Zelfa Barrett, the former world title challenger at 130 pounds following one of his best wins, um, maybe even his best career win to date, a um, stoppage victory of, of uh, Jordan Gill in an all uh, British battle that took place, um, I believe it was on uh, April, April 13th. Um, is, is when they collided or uh, April 6th one of those two uh, when they collided <clears throat> in a 130 pound bout now before we get into that if you could smash the like button leave a comment or subscribe to the channel I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here so you know this win right here for Zelfa Barrett was uh, it was something that he dearly needed you know Zelfa Barrett kind of got left out in the cold following a 2022 where he you know, almost became the world champion. He ran into Shavkat Rakhimov and um, scored a knockdown early on. It was actually winning the fight at the time that um, that Rakhimov stopped him in the ninth round. Um, there was an apparent uh, leg injury there um, that has never really been confirmed. Um, but Zelfa Barrett, you know, in 2023 kind of faded out, you know, um, in terms of the top 10, like he, just because of his inactivity and guys moving in and stuff, I actually dropped Zelfa Barrett out of the top 10, but he was floating right there around the top 10. And then he runs into Jordan Gill, who, you know, very upset minded. He had beaten, um, Jordan Gill had beaten, uh, Michael Conlon last year and Conlon's debut at 130, And he was rolling in. And I think Zelfa Barrett probably took it to heart that Jordan Gill was the A-side heading into this fight, you know? I think he probably took that personal, which I don't blame him. And uh, they decided to go at it. And, um, you know, I really, it was it was a good battle, back and forth battle. I really thought Zelfa Barrett was gonna completely outbox Jordan Gill, and he didn't. And, um, you know, it was a very even matchup until the end when he hurt him with a body shot and put him down and stopped him impressively. So this was a big win for Zelfa Barrett, a much needed win that puts him, in my opinion, you know, we'll see at the mid-year when I do my mid-year top 10s, but it put him right in that serious mix of the top 10 uh, discussion again. So um, let's run through the top 10 and see uh, what could possibly be next. We know he's not a mandatory challenger. His highest rating is number six by the WBA. So he still has some work to do, but let's run through the top 10 and see what uh, what is possible. First, there's WBO champion Emmanuel Navarrete. Uh, one, whether Navarrete wins that lightweight in his next fight or not, which he's the favorite uh, to become the new lightweight champion in May, um, I don't see this one being possible because one, they're with different networks, and two, there's just not a demand for this fight, so I don't see it. Uh, Robson Concisao. Uh, depends, again, it's a rival network, you know, Concisao's with the uh, top rank, so it'd be interesting to see if him and Zelfa Barrett could agree uh, on terms for a fight, but, um, you know, I, I just don't know. I don't think there's a demand for this fight right now, but I would definitely like to see it, but Concisao seems like he's right around the corner from a title shot, so he might have avoid a tough matchup like Zelfa Barrett, so I don't see this one. Then there's IBF champion Joe Cordina, which would be a good matchup right there. They're both promoted by the same guy, but uh, Zelfa Barrett would have to jump um, Eduardo Nunez, for the shot, the next shot, if Cordina gets by his opponent, Anthony Kakachi, on the Fury and Usyk undercard um, on May 18th, if Cordina's successful in, in stage IBF champion, he's going to have to face Eduardo Nunez next as mandatory. And Zelfa Barrett is, you know, it, it, it just wouldn't, wouldn't likely happen. So I don't see that one either. Um, then there's WBC champion Oshaki Foster. Um, he's with top rank now, so it's a tough fight to make. Um, and I think Foster is either going to be in mandatory mode or, or he's going to try to unify, um, or he's just going to try to pick a guy with top rank to take on because he has the option of possibly unifying with Oscar Valdez. If he gets upgraded to the next champion, then there's, uh, the chance, then there's his mandatory, which is a guy named, uh, I think Yakubov. And then um, there's also Robson Concisao sitting there, which would be a good name on Foster's resume. So I just don't, I don't see uh, Foster and, um, and uh, I don't see Foster and Barrett being a possibility. 
Uh, then we look at, excuse me one second. Then we look at Shafkat Rakamov, a rematch. Um, not likely. Rakamov's coming off back-to-back -back losses now. He lost the title to Joe Cordina early last year, and then he took on Eduardo Nunez um, in February of this year in a good, tough action battle. And he got stopped in his home country in the 11th round against uh, Eduardo Nunez. So to take on Zelfa Barrett, who was not an easy fight the first time around, I don't see it unless Zelfa Barrett demands a rematch and, and Rakamov wants to come right back and take on a top challenger like Zelfa Barrett. That's the only way I see um, these two guys getting together. And I'd like to say, uh, to me, it's on the, on the less likely side. So we'll see. Uh, WBA champion Lamont Roach Jr., not likely, even though he has not si yet signed with, um, with uh, a, a, you know, a promotion, a new promotion, um, he does have two mandatories due. Uh, the last I heard, he has two mandatories due before he could make an optional defense, and Barrett would be an optional defense, so I don't see this one. Then there's former WBA champion Hector Luis Garcia. Well, he's a PBC guy. So I would love to see the matchup, but I don't think it comes together just because of that. Then there's WBO interim champion, uh, Oscar Valdez. A uh, great matchup, but he's a top ranked guy and he's uh, likely gonna be in a bigger fight next. Uh, something in house as well. I don't think, um, you know, uh, top rank and Bob Arum are gonna work with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom to make this fight possible. Um, Mark Maxayo, another guy that has ties with the PBC. So I don't see him and um, Barrett getting together. Uh, Edward Vasquez, this is an interesting one. I think if Edward Vasquez is still working with Matchroom, I think this fight could be possible because Vasquez um, fought Cordina very tough back in, um, back in November of last year for the IBF title, came up just short. Um, so I could definitely see these two guys potentially matching up um, in, you know, in a battle of guys that came up short for the IBF title within a year of each other, but are, are serious contenders. So I could see this matchup potentially taking place for sure. Um, next is, uh, you know, outside of the top 10 other guys, uh, a Jordan Gill rematch, not likely. Rocky Hernandez would be interesting, but I think he's already in another uh, bout. Lee Wood. Lee Wood wants to make his debut. It's an easy fight to make. If he wants to make his debut at 130 against Zelfa Barrett, like I said, it's an easy fight to make, but it might be a bad matchup for Lee Wood. So I think he'd stay away from that for now. Liam Wilson's coming off of another loss. I don't think he'd want to get in there with Barrett. Um, Yakubov is the number one ranked contender, WBC. Otar Edenazian, I think, is in line for Lamont Roach Jr., so I don't see that. Albert Bell is in line for the WBO belt at some point because he's a number one ranked contender. Jono Carroll is an interesting one. I don't think Carroll is the mandatory challenger or one of the two mandatory challengers in the WBA. So I could honestly see the WBA maybe ordering a Jono Carroll and Zelfa Barrett showdown to determine, you know, the, their next number one ranked contender. That one might be possible. Um, and then you got Kenichi Ogawa. Another easy fight to make is he's also with Matchroom. And he's ranked, I believe he's ranked number four in the WBA right now. So that might be a good route to go. So Eddie Hearn has some options, and I think he's going to pull the trigger on, on something here. Um, and I think the Kenichi Ogawa fight is probably the most likely because of where they're ranked in the WBA. And they're both with Matchroom, and it's an easy fight to make. So we'll see what happens, but that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on former world title challenger, Zelfa Barrett of the United Kingdom following... An impressive TKO victory over Jordan Gill in an all-UK battle in early April. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.